well within therapeutic doses not, not no um even but i mean even even the studies where they've you know there, there's been some studies where they've, they've got um not not football but with endurance but with endurance sport they've got them to they've got an individual to take like 80 puffs of it <laughs> and then and then of the blue um, is that of, of the blue inhaler yeah. Really and, and, yeah and then they've done like a time trials to exhaustion and things and there's been no no change in performance no change in um no change in oxygen kinetics so no change in how fast you can take oxygen in no. um and the only things they saw really were an elevated heart rate right which is actually detrimental to, <laughs> to performance yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, and again that's another reason not to take too much of the blue inhaler because it can increase your heart rate okay so, so for a given workload you, you can actually be working harder yeah so again that that's where it all, all comes back to we need to optimize the, the preventative therapy so they're not relying on the subutamol uh, in the short term so um, so yeah, so in, I mean, again, again, I think that, that one of the key messages, and this always, I think it's always had a bit of a, of an impact on people with asthma. I said to you on the phone is basically sometimes these stories come out and people think, oh, that means they're cheating. Yeah. And I, and what and then what then what it has is a knock on effect for people who do have asthma or or, or athletes and, and have asthma, they feel like, oh, should I be taking my inhaler? Do I want to be taking my inhaler? Because it's gonna people are gonna start looking at me as if I'm trying to. Trying yeah. to get an advantage, and, that, yeah. and ultimately, they 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 just need to use that to keep their airways healthy. Yeah, yeah. And, and what are you saying could have a benefit? The oral doses. Yeah, is so, that where you take it like a medicine then? Well, it comes in a pill. Oh, so, right, so right. when we refer to or, when we when we refer to oral, what we mean is yeah. uh, it's like basically a pill. So, Salbutamol. Yeah, so you can take you, you, oh. you can you can get Salbutamol in a pill, but that's totally banned. So an athlete's oh. not allowed to take Salbutamol uh, in a pill at all. Um, Why well, is that can, different, John? Sorry to butt in. Um, so if you're taking a pill, obviously it's got to go into your stomach, yeah. through your intestines, and then it gets picked up in your blood, and then yeah. it goes around your body. Right. So um, that does picked, have a performance enhancing. Yeah. And that, so that's going to basically you're going to get a much larger content of that drug going to hit your hit your muscles um, as well as your lungs, and but effectively what the drugs are. So so the the um, subutamol. So is the actual type of drug is called a beta two adrenal receptor, right. and so effectively what it does is, it, it, if you think about adrenaline, it's adrenaline works on your alpha and beta beta uh, adrenal receptors, and so effectively if a beta two agonist or a beta is going to work on a beta two adrenal receptor, and so effectively the way it works is it effectively back the subutamol binds to your, to your beta two adrenal receptors. And the response is the same as if that beta two adrenaline receptor came in touch with adrenaline. Right. Okay. Right. So in fact, so if you if you if you're triggering off all your beta two adrenaline receptors around your body, that means that your beta two adrenaline receptors in your muscles are getting activated, and you, that's going to cause an increase in um, muscle contractility, oh, right. and, and 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 basically improves your strength and power. Oh right. Okay. And but it doesn't go into your blood if you're taking it through your lungs. So, so if you take it, in, inhale it, it gets yeah. into your lungs. But the actual transfer into your blood is is, is minimal. Oh right. Okay. So that's why you don't. So that, so that, that's why there's a. So the way they test for it in, is an anti-doping. One of the ways they test for it is basically looking at metabolites of subutamol in your urine. Right. So obviously, for it to get into urine, it's going to have to have passed from your lung into your blood, and then obviously you know kicked out for through for, for your urine and so we know that if you take say six puffs of salbutamol there's only going to be a very small amount of it in your urine yeah whereas if you, if you take a, a ton of salbutamol there's obviously going to be a lot more and there's actually you can tell you can tell the difference between the dose of a of a oral and a dose of an inhaled so there's right. quite a clear there's quite a clear cut off yeah right. when so, would you need to take the pill then when, when would that be oh it, for an asthmatic yeah. if, you're, if you're in hospital and you're having a very severe asthmatic yeah so uh, okay right uh, so um so they they don't get prescribed very often at all oh. um so you're not you're not gonna have an you know and the the side effects of them are massive so they're not oh. it, i always say if you get subutamol wise if you're going to cheat that don't use subhuman with it. It's, it's, you know, as much as it might improve strength and power, you're going to have a significant heart rate elevation. You're probably going to get the shakes because you, uh, so you're going to get, uh, and you might get heart palpitations and things. So, uh, um, so yes, yeah, so it only tends to get given to really, really sort of asthmatics in a, in a really bad way. Uh, the, the other medication, so the brown inhalers, again, there's an oral form of that medication. Okay. That's, that's called prednisolone. Um, and again, this is this is the slight area where there's a bit of grey zone. 
So athletes aren't allowed to use prednisolone in competition. Mm. So within two weeks of competition, they're not allowed to use it. Um, and they are outside of that two weeks of competition. So for a football player, again, it's, it's, it's not likely to be used because they, they play so often. But they are allowed to use it if they get a special certificate called a therapeutic use exemption. And they might get a short term, a short term window where they're allowed to use it. And they might get they might get given a retrospective to you because if they've got asthma and it flares up really badly, they might need to take some prednisolone to get dampened down all the inflammation. So there might be that kind of retrospective kind of action where a doctor's gone, well, you're really bad. Have some because. It's, it's what you need, but it's what you need, but we haven't got a TUE in place. But if that was the case, then an athlete would probably get pulled from the competition because their asthma was that right. was that bad. Yeah. But there are potentially a few cases where an athlete's asthma might flare up maybe a day or two before a competition, and then they are asked to be able to use it, have a TUE to be able to use oral prednisolone alone um, to, to basically work on the athletes uh, or to reduce, reduce the athlete's inflammation. Okay. Now, the potential for that oral prednisolone, but then once an athlete's got TUE to use a prednisolone, they can potentially use it during the competition. And the, the potential of that is that it, that it will, it's, it's an anti-inflammatory. Now, obviously, it's going to be anti-inflammatory in the lungs, which is what you want to dampen down the, that down the, informa- down the inflammation lungs, but it will also dampen down the inflammation across the whole body because it's, okay. it's, it's working across the whole body. Oh. So that means things like inflammation from, from doing high-intensity exercise that you're getting your, you're getting your muscles isn't there so it means as soon as you finish your, your sport you're feeling fresh as a daisy because you haven't got all this built up information so you're not getting okay. you're not feeling stiff and sore the next day okay. and so you feel more like you can go so again there's a performance enhancing benefit so, to that yeah thing. but that's that requires a a, t, a therapeutic use exemption certificate yeah. Yeah. and to get one of them the doc the the medical team would need to basically present evidence that the athlete or the player is having significant asthma symptoms despite being on optimal inhaler therapy yeah so basically saying that this athlete has asthma they're on current inhaler therapy and they've had a flare-up of asthma and uh, and and it and it's and the inhalers aren't, aren't working so we need to use a prednisolone to help get it under control yeah so they have to present evidence of that and then that evidence goes to a, an independent panel of three three medics, and then the, those those three medics will basically decide yes or no that that's acceptable right. or not. Okay, right. Um, now, this is my my argument is if an athlete gets a TUE for fitness loan, fine because they might need it for their health, but also for the health they probably shouldn't be competing at the highest end of elite elite competition yeah, yeah, because yeah. if they if they having that flare up then their their lungs probably aren't healthy enough to. Mm-hmm. To, to, to compete and most of the time prednisolone in a general population is given to people that are either on the verge of going into hospital or in or, or are in hospital because of their asthma right oh okay so yeah. that kind of gives you the context of how often prednisolone is prescribed yeah in terms of it's only really given to really severe cases of asthma yeah so what why the authorities are letting athletes compete whilst using prednisolone is a mystery because that's effectively putting the athlete's health at risk. Right. Yeah. yeah. But the flip side of that is if you let the athlete, if you say to the athlete, right, if you're using prednisolone, you can't compete. An athlete will, who, who is actually having an asthma response will go, you know what? I'll just get through on my inhalers. Right. I'll just, Cause I don't want the prednisolone now. Cause I want to compete. But yes. again, the athlete's airway health is at risk. Is at a risk there? Because, um, there are asthma might be flaring up and they're not having their prednisolone. They need to get their, Get 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 their asthma under control because they were they're so desperate to compete. Yeah, yeah. So it, it kind of you know which which side of the argument you kind of fall on it depends on on, on kind of wh- wh- whether you think we should have a grey zone where some athletes might manipulate the rules so they can use prednisolone during competition, or you or you have a no no athletes going to use prednisolone during competition with a risk of the odd asthmatic might come through and have a have a severe event during a major competition. So. Yeah. You know, you can debate. You can, you can debate all day long about which uh, <laughs> what, what what should happen. But um, at the moment, the rules are uh, the athlete can apply for a TUE and potentially can use prednisolone. Yeah. 